Welcome to the See Me Be Me podcast. I'm Nal Henry. And I'm Blair Henry. And we're two brothers who set out on a mission to make motorsport and STEM careers more diverse, affordable, and inclusive. We are the founders of The Blair Project. This podcast series delves into the minds of inspirational individuals who come from ordinary and often humble backgrounds, but through their belief, dogged determination and never give up attitude, I managed to overcome academic, social or mental challenges to achieve their dream careers. Our guests will share their life lessons that you too can apply to your own. We hope their stories will inspire you to go further, aim higher and accept nothing less than you deserve. Your ambition, your purpose is all within and we're here to help you unlock it. The planet of possibilities are endless. Hello and welcome to the See Me Be Me podcast. On today's episode, we are joined by we are joined by the founder and CEO of Wellbeing and Ergonomics and Tech Disinfect, Karim Samani. Welcome to the podcast, Karim. Hey, Nal, thank you so much. And Blair, thank you so much for having me. You know, I'm very excited about this podcast with you two legends. Oh, oh stop it, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, thanks. Thanks, Karim. So first... I think I, I, I met you guys today. In, uh, I think I met you guys at the HR event, didn't we? At the Old Trafford, if I'm not mistaken. This is how we met, right? Yes, we met at the Peninsula event, uh, Peninsula HR event, yeah. And I think we've seen each other a couple of times. Let me correct it. I think it was Croner, it wasn't Peninsula. I think it was Croner. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I listen from uh, Croner. Apologise about that one. <laughs> no, but yes, we did We did meet there. We did meet there. I think we met yeah. at a couple of uh, EV networking events as well. Yes, but we did. For our audience, for our audience, Chris, <laughs> can you tell us a bit about yourself, and how you got started on this on this journey yeah sure um so guys my name is karim samani uh, and uh, i'm the business owners i got two businesses one is called Valbeing and ergonomics and the second one is called tech disinfect let me take you on the journey of the tech disinfect how i started i'm a qualified accountant and i work with the massive corporates before i start uh, my own business and what i always found um that when i worked on a uh, hot desking in a workplace environment. I always found workstations very, very filthy. And from there, I developed something which is called um, sinus uh, because the dust and allergies from the IT equipment, which hardly get cleaned. So here's a question for you. When was the last time you disinfected your IT device um, to protect your well-being? And let's see what answer you get in your head. So that was the question. It was in my head as well. Right. Because I work in the finance industry, I was seeing like the how the absenteeism goes up in the workplace because people are unhe unhealthy. Uh, then they do suffer from um, uh, what we call is a minor illnesses, which is called flu. But the thing is, if we don't disinfect our IT devices and if they contaminate it with all kinds of bacteria, germs and everything, we use them seven, eight hours a day. And how often do you think about disinfecting them? And that was the question in my head that I couldn't answer myself because I wasn't doing it myself. So that's why I just thought, right, okay, I'm gonna start a company which is gonna be called Tech Disinfect. And uh, this is what it's gonna do uh, to help businesses to protect employees uh, health and well-being in the workplace from the dimension which not many businesses think about, right? So that was the journey for me. It has been a hard journey, it's not been a very easy journey because concept is not new but to raise an awareness that you need to do this as a part of your cleanliness regime, it was hard to get into it. And trust me, it was a journey. <laughs> so, so yeah, this is how I started. Um, but the thing is, during the pandemic at the start of 2019, yeah. um, my I lost 93% of the business, which I worked so hard for, only because uh, workplaces were shut down. Uh, everybody was working from home and we had no way to go. And you know, when you have the, you work so hard for the business, the business is here and all of a sudden, it's just like this. Mm. And for me, I'm an entrepreneur rather than a businessman. And, and it, it, as for me, it was about what else I can do to keep myself in the industry, which which complement uh, to the tech disinfect business. I don't want you to close the business. I want to leave it there. So that's where I started developing in ergonomics. 
So well being and ergonomics is uh, it's all about office ergonomics. Is that that's related? So tech is in fact well being and ergonomics they complement each other. Yeah, yeah, right. So this is how I started my journey. But as I said, um, I was a, I'm a learner. I want to learn something new. I don't want you to just start something out of the blue. I want to learn, experience, and practice this myself before I advise anyone else. So well being and ergonomics is all about how you maintain your good posture. Uh, in the workplace so you don't suffer from any kind of MSD or MSK issues uh, for yourself and you live a healthy life in the workplace and at home. Also, the bigger uh, picture of well-being and ergonomics, how we can keep businesses aligned with the HSC, which is your health and safety executive, DSC assessment, which is your display screen equipment assessment, which is by law, every employer must do it for a DSC user. So for me, it was this question that I have in my head that how can I help businesses to look after employees' health and well-being, but at the same time, they stay aligned with the HSC law as well. Yeah, fantastic. So, I mean, I think a lot of people would have been thinking, you know, wow, you, you are a qualified accountant, you are working at a big corporate firm, you know, people probably presume things were good, you know, it's busy, but things are good, you know, to take that plunge of leaving something that was, you know, allowed you to pay your bills, live your lifestyle, and then take that risk of, you know, leaving, setting up your own business, becoming an entrepreneur, you know, what was the, I suppose, how was that process for you? And what was the deciding factor to take that leap of faith? I think there are the two things. One I will say is a risk and a calculated risk. I was taking a very calculated risk because I've already done the pre-research before I was going in the tech disinfect business. And I just thought, right, okay, I spoke to the FM company. They said, we don't, we're not doing it. I spoke to some other people, they're not doing it. So I just thought I can do it, but I need to start creating that model. So for me, it was all about taking risks, but at the same time, I just thinking, right, you know what? I got a qualification in my hand, right? I can use that qualification to establish this business and take it to the next level, Yeah. right? So I just thought, what's the worst gonna happen? Right. If I fail, I can always walk into another job. But I didn't start the business with that mindset. I said, no, I'm not going back to work in the corporate life ever again. I'm going to go on my own journey is a risk. Life is a risk and I have to take it. Everybody must take a risk, you know, and there is no guarantee and warranty for anything in the life. And I just thought if I'm not going to take it now, right, when when I've been ready for it. And I just thought I need to take this plunge and uh, swim. In, in a river without knowing that I don't know how to swim, right? So I need to learn, I need to adapt, I need to do something different. And yeah. this is how I started. Um, I just want to follow on with that, uh, Karim. I was having a look at um, your website, the wellbeing and ergonomics.co.uk, uh, and yes. found it uh, quite interesting um, reading through um, about the different like workplace uh, events that you guys like offer. Could you take us through some of these events? That, um... Yeah, sure. Um, so by the way, look, this is how an entrepreneur journey starts. You know, the website you visited, I designed yeah. it myself from scratch. Wow. I didn't know how to do it. But as I said, when I started Tech Disinfect and when I lost that business, nearly 95% of it, and I wanted to start well-being and ergonomics, I did not have enough money to pay somebody to come and create an e-commerce website. The website you went to is a yeah. fully functional e-commerce website. Wow. It took me six months to learn. But I just thought, now I need to learn it to save this money that I can reinvest into something. So that's another part of the entrepreneurship. You guys must explore opportunities within yourself to be more creative. And that's a very good message for you guys, right? So let me take you to the well-being uh, well events in the workplace. So when we design a well-being event in the workplace, it's all about how we can help improve employees' quality of life in the workplace. So we do many health checks which is like your blood pressure, your sugar level check. We do eye test uh, screening as well. Uh, we talk about nutrition only because a lot of people eat and drink all sorts of things. But what they don't understand is like how it is changing their body inside. So some people develop type 2 diabetes and get into any kind of health issues. So we design workplace well-being event that we set up for a day uh, and uh, we got industry experts who deliver this program for us. So for example, I do uh, ergonomic side, we got somebody who does the nutrition, somebody else does uh, mini health check. So it's all about delivering and bringing the experts 
in the business so they benefit other people in the business fantastic and what and in terms of like some of the clients that you work with what are like some of the results and how does it affect their um i guess their work-life balance since uh doing some of the, the uh, training and some of the events like, yeah afterwards. so i'll give you an example of a dsc assessment which i talked about before as well so dsc assessments in law every employer must do for uh for their for their employees so yeah. what the law is say is the 1992 regulations 2000 and 20 amendment that's what it is and it's a dse law so what the law says if you me or anyone else working in the workplace either from home either they're working uh from and the hybrid model whichever way if they're using a laptop a screen even a mobile phone for work for more than an hour yeah. that person is classed as a dsc user and this is not me saying it this is the health and safety executive they are saying it so they they created the classification um, so every employer must do, do it, uh, you know, this is in law and if they fail to do it, employees can take those, uh, the employer to a court. Oh. Right. So quite interesting. So if you're, if you're an employer and let's say your employee is working from home and they're using their own equipment, <clears> that the, the employer is liable. It is the their liability. Wow. It is. Okay. And I've been to the four court cases so far. And the first compensation I've seen given by by the judge to an employee is ninety eight thousand pound. This is a pure cost of a compensation doesn't include legal cost and other cost at the moment that company. Right. So far has spent one hundred and twenty five thousand pound. They got five hundred employees. Imagine if everybody start doing it, that company will shut down very, very quickly. Two years ago, oh, yes. the same company asked me for a quote, which I gave it to them, which was 194 pound plus VAT, and they said they will think about it. Wow. And I so, wish they would have taken my advice at the time. I would have saved them all this money to reinvest into their employees' health and well-being and done everything correct correct in law with the in, in line with the law. So Karim, in terms of companies who, you know. You know, what would be your advice and guidance? How often would uh, a, a company, should they be, you know, in disinfecting their employees' work, workstations? Yeah. Is, it, is it once a month? So now you're before? talking about the tech disinfect side of the business. So it's all about yeah. the type of business, right? So let's say if there's an office for 20 people um, and because is an environment which is already got some kind of air con in it and you can open the window and stuff like this so you can do that i mean i would say quarterly will be a very very good uh, very very good way to start mm -hmm. with quarterly uh, but some companies who are working in a very dusty environment they need to start from the monthly going into two two months depending so we, what we do is a risk assessment in the workplace and this yeah. is how we this is how we do the measure measure of like okay how often we need to send the team to disinfect um the devices for them actually oh very interesting very interesting i was thinking i, I don't think i've ever disinfected any of my machines so uh maybe i should save, uh, save an extra save an extra ninety eight thousand a year uh, but you know what that was that was to do the dsc assessment that's what i'm saying so they're the two part of the business tech disinfect is an fm company the facilities management so yeah. we got a small team and they physically disinfect it devices well-being in ergonomics is a completely different business but gel these two businesses together we are workstation specialists so the compensation was given was from the uh, from the well-being and ergonomic side of the business only because an employer failed to do a dsc assessment uh, which is ergonomic related uh, for an uh, for an employee working from home uh, you, you briefly touched on it just then, uh, Karim. I was going to uh, go go on to it for the uh, next question, but yeah, it's just because um, your business is aligned with like uh, HSE and uh, DSE assessment law. So, could you talk to us more about the, um, the more about the DSE law and like um, what rights employees would have regarding like like DFE? But overall, right. so just to be as to be very clear, if you visit the HSC website, they yeah. have the very clear guidance on it, you know, very yeah. detailed, very clear guidance. So anyone can go in, look at the HSC website and they can give you. So it's a 1992 regulation amended 
2020 that's what it is and i explained before if anyone using a laptop a monitor or even a mobile phone uh, more than an hour is a dsc class of the dsc user and that employer must do a dsc assessment for that employee either working from home for one minute or for an hour or working hybrid model this is their liability or this is their responsibility or this is their moral duty uh, to fulfill actually uh, to ensure employees health and safety in the workplace and at home wow okay now Karim. I'm gonna I'm gonna try quite slightly change the topic a little bit. Sure. Uh, and it's gonna take it way way back, back to childhood, <laughs> back to eight year old Karim. You know. Yes. What were your dreams when you were growing up? In terms of, did you always think? Were you always great at maths and you, you wanted to do a job that revolved around maths? You know, eventually doing accountancy, or you know, did you have dreams of you know <clears throat> one day wanting to become your own business uh, 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 entrepreneur? You know, what was what was Karim's dream growing up? I think um, if I take myself at eight year old, actually um, working in an Asian family and, you know, my parents were very business oriented. Yeah. Right. We come from the very, very poor family, very, very poor family. Me and my sisters and parents, we lived in a one bedroom flat uh, for a very long time. So this is how the journey started um, for, for us, actually. But I think my parents, they had a very, very good mindset, actually, what they can do with that not you you don't always need the money you need a skills people skills and this is what they've given us to how to talk to people how to get the work with the people right because business is people business <laughs> people by people so yeah. that's very very important to to basically to understand that and i think from the very young age they taught us this lesson they my parents given me education they helped me with the education uh, you know they brought us very very well um, they made it understand that how the business is run actually yeah. right so when we were young i mean eight years but take you like 12 years 13 years old i used to go to my my parents factory and uh, they used to just teach us not by what is on the paper but showing us a demonstrating example of how to run a business how to talk to people and i think this level has always stick with me to how to you know make your way into the business and into the people to gain business. I don't know if it makes sense, but that's what it is. The business is that you need to work hard for it. You know, if the opportunity would not come to you, you need to chase an opportunity. So, so it's almost like a, your family is almost like a family of entrepreneurs and you, they, they yes. have like the entrepreneurial mindset. They passed that down to you as well. Yeah. And we all started uh, from very, very uh, kind of like, you know, nothing to be honest. We all do. Any business is started with anything. We have the concept. But for me, as I said, I'm a personal, I'm a person of like, I don't just write things on my paper. I act. I take action. Yeah. And there is a big, this is the biggest difference into having a, a concept for a business and taking that concept to the market. Because the minute you take that concept to the market, that's where you're going to find out is that business going to lift or is it going to be drowned? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people fail because they have the concept, just as keep thinking, right, you know what, i got a very, very good concept. But until they launch, they don't know the value of that business. Completely agree. Completely agree. And I suppose, you know, leading on, following up to that, what do you think would were our key, a free key skills that everybody needs if they, you know, if they're setting up, if they want to be an entrepreneur, they're going on that journey and want to, you know, try and create a successful business. What are the three core skills that are, are required in your opinion? I think the first thing I would say, become a calculated risk taker. Yeah. That's very, very important because business is all about risk, right? Every business that you see that started is they all these people always taking a risk because sometimes that product or services doesn't exist in the market. Sometimes that product and service already exist in market. If it doesn't exist, you make it happen. If it already existed, then you can find a way to improve it. Right? So that's where you calculate the risk it, but that's very, very important. Second thing is very important, I would say, is your personal branding. Because I generated business to who Karim Samani is and how can I help people. My product and services come after me. Is this people the is the face that people buy that they trust? what I'm saying to them because I already studied my time or invested my time in studying something to educate those people. Yeah. So your personal branding is very, very important. 
to you know to for people to believe in you to understand you and to trust into you so that's very very important so work on your personal brand because that's very important for example i've seen some pictures of elon musk actually he doesn't go out with a gucci t-shirt or a dulce and gabbana t-shirt he goes in a plain t-shirt right look at the simon cowell so they are the brand themselves yeah Right, you saw Simon Cowell on um, on X Factor. He always wear a white color T-shirt. Doesn't say Simon Cowell on it, but people know who is he. Yeah. So your personal branding is very important. And the third one is very important: do your research. Because if you don't want to fail, do your research. Yeah. From the research, that you will you will learn how to take a calculated risk. What what is Oscar Karim? I mean. You've got two well successful um, businesses in well-being and ergonomics and uh, tech disinfect. But did you encounter wait when well when getting started on your journey? Did you encounter any barriers to getting these businesses set up uh, when you first started? <clears throat> it was it was not kind of like barrier in sense of, but I think it was my own mindset which was stopping to launch some time. <laughs> yeah. So I was a barrier for myself rather than because thing I can set up the company. Do it within 10 minutes. You can do it. It's not that, but I was a barrier for myself because sometimes I was overthinking. Overthinking. Oh yeah. The, um, making things more complex. Making things more complex, yeah. but keep overthinking, overthinking. But that was to do with my first business, which was tech disinfect. Right. Oh, I've man. learned a lot from that process that within year and a half, when it came to developing an ergonomics and when I lost 95% of tech disinfect business, on that day, I went on a very long walk with my pen and paper. Yeah. And I just thought, what, what else I'm going to do? What else I can use uh, my expertise or I can learn to, to save the other business? And I went with a pen and paper, not with my mobile phone, because that is a very distracting thing. I started writing yeah. it down, everything on, my, on a piece of paper. And you know what? It benefited me so much because by the time I came home, I knew what exactly I'm going to do. I knew what the business name will be, and I knew who I'm going to speak with. If I had my phone with me, I will be on the phone looking for ideas. No, I went back and looking the ideas in my head and in my heart. Well, they do say, that, you know, best way of like retaining information is, is to write it down on paper, isn't it? Or even yeah, exactly. Know, and I knew ideas, exactly. I'm you so, just flow. Yeah. And you know what? Well being in ergonomics is a very simple name. But is this is what exactly what we do? It just says what we say. I could not make it more complicated. But if I would have started overthinking, I would have made it very very complicated, which people have never understood what we do. So I just thought, well-being and ergonomics, boom, is this is what we do. So you said one of the one of the three unique skills was about personal branding. You yeah. Know, how and I, I'm obviously we've been connected for quite, I think quite a number of years now, and I've seen some of your posts and you. you you built up a, a, a good following. Um, when was it you first started to take personal branding and using LinkedIn seriously? And you know what are what are some of the things that you, you've learned along the way in terms of uh, capturing engagement? Yeah. So during the pandemic, I just thought, how can I? Because look, I'm not a cold caller. I can't. It, I've been running this business for such a long time. Believe me or not, I never picked a phone and made a cold call to anyone. I can't do it. So when I found out about LinkedIn and how it can do, when I started using LinkedIn, I was doing it completely wrong, right? Because I was just going on a journey. And I just thought, I could know that would be a better way of doing it. And there are so many people, they will share their knowledge and expertise, how to be better on LinkedIn. And I think I managed to educate myself by going through the learning process. So I have to change my content. I have to change myself. I need to become a more, come across more entrepreneurial rather than a, a fun guy to work with. Do you see what I mean? Because there is a, um, you need to create a, a line between a fun guy and an entrepreneur. Yeah. So I just thought I need to work on that. That's why I just thought, okay, what will be my personal brand actually? And that's where I got a, the best beard looking guy who's called the chairman on LinkedIn. And I think, that went very, very well. <laughs> that worked in my favor. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, so now everybody calls you the best beard man. Is a chat. Yeah. 
you know yeah. and i think when you if you visit my linkedin profile you will see it then it just says the, the best beard on linkedin and i just thought right okay no you know what i what i would what, what i'm trying to uh to prove to people look as a person i'm an expert in what i do but i'm not a boring person to deal with mm, yeah. right well, people, i think i think one of the things as well is that people want to be connected you know if people are wanting to support a brand they want to connect with the individuals behind the brand don't they yes it's yeah. probably why you know oh well, it's probably is why you know some, an organization like tesla is successful you know elon is the face of the brand he's yeah. very much he's personable he's a bit like an alien but you know yeah people can somehow relate to him yeah. um and that's why tesla's yeah i think your product and services clients. are very yeah your product and services are very very important because that's what it brings you revenue uh mm. but i think is is your face that you put in front of those product and services that's even worth huge amount because people are buying into you people are depending on your expertise that you're going to give them the right and the best advice so they do the right thing for their people and for their business yeah mm. Mm. Uh, Karim, what I want to ask is, um, due to the essentially the effects of the lockdown, it, it affected many people just around the country, like mentally, you know, people being inside all the time, not being able to see family, friends and uh, members and whatnot. And one of the main uh, focuses of your organization is like in increasing uh, employee like productivity. So I just wanted to like uh, get an understanding of, do you know, like the some of the the work and like how's it affected like people do you know mentally and like how how people do you know with their work life balance after the effects of yeah. lockdown uh just some of the experiences that you found like after the experiences yeah. of lockdown how are people so, doing to balance their work life balance yeah so you just said it right the first thing went is a work and life balance because everybody was home they were just thinking they can log in at any time they were they were not following their own hr rules actually i would say yeah right People working from home, they're just working from their sofas, they're working from their beds, they're working from their dining tables, actually. They just thought this is okay to do, yeah. right? Yeah. And those people now returning to work, they develop more of the musculoskeletal issues and stuff like this. So this happened a lot. Um, their mindset changed. So they're just saying some people now don't want to return to work. But in my view, and this is personally, I'm saying it, it may be different for other people. Yeah. I'm a people's person, right? I'm an extrovert. I like people to be around, right? Yeah. So for me, going to the workplace is the best thing because I can speak with people. I don't need to book a time on Zoom with people. Yeah. I can have a banter with people in the workplace, right? And this is good for my mental health and well-being. For some people, it was other way around. They just said, you know what? I got my time now. I can do whatever I want. So it's like people finding their own uh, work and life balance actually but i think is yeah. did they do it in line with their hr policy and within the within the hsc rules we don't know that do we yeah true and that's very very important and how how important is it for an organization to have an ergonomic have an ergonomic workstation oh it's very important i mean thinking look at them i'm i'm gonna i'm trying to remember some figures in my head actually now right okay you're testing me now um, if I look at the UK absenteeism records, uh, which is the latest report, is I think it's 2022. Anyone can go and just type in the Google uh, UK absenteeism or the labor force data. If I'm not mistaken, due to MSD issues, UK businesses in 2022, they lost 13.7 million days. Well, wow. right. Believe me or not, mental health comes number five. And I think if I'm not mistaken, that number is 9.8 million days. Wow. Now, if I have to ask you both a question, what do you think is the biggest reason of absenteeism in the workplace? What would be your one answer? Uh, staff unhappy. Yeah. Or, Blair, uh, what about you? Uh, yeah, it would have been. I was going to say some similar like low morale in the workplace, uh, which yeah. is which is men mental health actually. Yeah. Mm. yeah, but the corporation or or the or, or the government body which collects, which is Office for National Staff, they collect all the information from every single in, in uh, organization. Yeah, their data is saying completely different. So, so it's all about it's, it's, 
Exactly. So you got uh, minor illnesses, which is on the top. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that is about 23.3 million days. Um, then after that, it was respiratory and mosquito lethal, 13.7 and 9.8. I think this, don't quote me on that number, but I think it's just around that numbers. Uh, that. So what is it telling me, this data? Not what organization is saying, what this data is telling me. So for me, that data is more trustworthy than what people are telling me in the workplace. Mm -hmm. But for me, the question is, by not following the right ergonomic practices, is it not creating the mental health? It is because people are suffering from the bad back, from the cervical problem, from the sciatica, stuff like this. That's all contributing of less productivity. It means people are falling behind their work. And it's technically impacting their health and well-being, and especially their mental health. Mm, interesting, interesting. Mm. And then, Karim, I wanted to ask you, well, this is um, sure. a more, well, personal question to you, but sure. what, what would you say has been thus far the proudest moment of your career? The proudest moment of my career is, um, is, is a very difficult question to answer, to be honest. You know what? Look, I'm proud to what I've achieved. From nothing to anything to whatever. So I need to give a big tap on my on my shoulder to what I've done. That's yeah. a product. My parents are proud of me to what I've done. Because the thing is, you know what? I use the right level of education, expertise. I've learned from the process. I learned from my failure. Yeah. Right? And I've learned from my success as well. For me, now the mission is, is how can I help other people, especially coming from the BME community, yeah. that which people have never been recognized for their work. So how we can help those people, you know what? Because sometimes we don't get recognition of to what we have done. Yeah, yeah. Right? And we people do put a lot of efforts um, to bring up our family, to provide for our family and do the best in, <clears throat> in any kind of situation. So for me, coming from the BAME community is my job role now. Look what I've achieved so far. You can do this as well, but there is a way to do it. You know, attend networking events, you know yeah. what, present yourself, be on a LinkedIn, tell people what exactly what you're on about, how you can help people. But there is a way to do it and the consistency play yeah. a very big role in that. I have seen from a lot of experiences where I don't see any people from the BME community to attend events. Yeah, mm -hmm. I go to networking events, I don't see them. And then when I speak with them, they say the business is not good. And I ask them a question, if you're not attending the events, how you want to generate the business. You have to be out there to yeah. mix with the community and just say, this is what I do. You know, this is what I do. And people will get to know it. People will get to know you. I mean, when I started business, I be, I used to go to a lot of networking events because I just thought if I'm, I can't do this from home, it's not possible. Mm. I need to get out and be in front of these people, either they like me or not, that's secondary. I'm just going to tell these people, look, I'm there to help you. And this is how can I help you? So I need to be on their face. Excellent. And you know what? I just want to re revert back to the conversation we were just having around, you know, those, those statistics from, from government. Um, yeah. It's got, it got me thinking as a small business. Like, oh God. Do you want me to pull that? It starts in front of me so I can give you the exact numbers. I mean, yeah, if, you, if you'd like to, but... Yeah, if you want to pull up those stats, yeah. Why are you, why are you finding them? Because I was thinking as an employer, you know, might be some other employers thinking this as well. You know, our, we will always want to make sure that our workplaces are safe for our staff yeah. to come and, and work. What 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 should we what should employers be doing more frequently to improve the health and well being of their staff? I think they need to go back and have a look what they haven't done so far. <laughs> this is a good starting point. Right? Because what they've already done is done, but what they haven't done, have they done the DSC assessment, which is not only the online, which is the tick box exercise, but have they done physically, are people are safe in the workplace? So they need to go back and have a look at their strategy actually work. Do you know what? We tap into all this, and this is the feedback we have received, and this is how we can make an improvement. But what we haven't done, mm, what we haven't done. if they're that, not going to go might... back and Sorry, if they haven't, nope. gonna, if they're not going to go back on the drawing board and say, this is what we haven't done. Yeah. Then they have the massive gap. And that gap can cause them a lot of trouble. Because, for example, if an uh, HSC inspector 
uh, walk into a business and they don't ask for an appointment. They can just walk into any time and they can ask for all kind of health and safety records. If a business fails to, uh, to provide them a satisfactory answer or provide them documentation, they get fined on the spot. <laughs> and this is a lot mm -hmm. of money. Mm -hmm. So they need to have a look in, as I said, businesses need to go back and have a look what they haven't done. It's fine to what you already done, improve on that, take a feedback from employees. But what you haven't done, that's the thing, is a pothole, I would just say, to, to basically cover. <laughs> I'm making sure your day, like all your health and safety. Yeah, safety I just I just put up that numbers actually uh, from the Office for National Starts. So they say uh, minor illnesses was 29.3 million days. Mosquito lethal was 10.5 million. Sorry, I quoted 13.7. I think it was a year before. Mental health is 7.9 million days. Uh, others, which people don't want to disclose, is 23.8 million. Days, and respiratory is 8.3 million days. So these are the numbers. So just correct these numbers, actually. Because I think I remember the year before. <laughs> wow. That's not that, that's a lot of days of people just being, yeah. being off. But, you know, these are just the numbers, right? But if you convert them into a money... That going in the billions. Yes. Because if they're saying in a million days, security pay, if you look at the number and you just multiply that number with a security pay, yeah. you know what the number is basically. Wow. Oh. What would you Crazy. say, Karim, what would you say is the biggest uh, learning curve that you've... Um, yeah, your biggest mm -hmm. learning curve since you started on your journey? The learning curve for me is um, I want to educate myself before I give any advice to anyone yeah. for me. As I said, well-being and ergonomics is all about people's health and well-being. And I don't want to play with people's health and well-being, but just by establishing a business and just give them any information. Either it's right or wrong. This is not me. For me, I went in the journey. And that was the biggest learning curve for me, actually. Do you know what? Educate myself more. I... I I sat down with, with the advanced um, ergonomists, with the chiropractors and physiotherapists before, yeah. I, before I can give any, any kind of advice to them. Another learning curve for me is like, am I using the product before I give this to Blair or for or Niall and just say that, guys, you know what? You guys should, you need to use this product, but am I using myself? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. True. Yeah, because and I, the reason for me to start the well-being economy it was one of them. I give you an example. One of my clients, he bought twenty thousand pound worth of footrest for people in the workplace. How much? Twenty thousand pound. This is a lot of money. And he called me uh, the other week and he said everybody's playing a football under the desk with a footrest. So for me, the question was, why did you buy it in the first place? What was your reason? He said, we just bought it. I said, no, that's not the right answer. I would like to know why did you buy it? What was your reason or what is your, your financial justification of buying them? He goes, we just bought them for uh, out of fashion because we just thought people are going to use it. I said to him, you only need a footrest if your employee, if your employee sitting on a, on a chair, when they adjust the height of the chair to the height of the desk, and if their feet are dangling, this is the only time you need a footrest. And this is what uh, HSC shown in the picture. He said, I didn't know that. And I said, now you wish that you would given me one phone call. I've saved you a lot of money. But you know the ripple effect of that? Now all these things been produced, right? Yeah. People lost money. No, it's not benefiting anyone. And what about the environmental impact? What is going to do with all this kind of thing? Mm. So that's where we do product consultancy in the workplace where we go in and when they for example if somebody refurbishing their office we tell them exactly these are the product if you install that's going to benefit you not a one year two year we look at the 10 years plan that how it's going to improve somebody's health and well-being and reduce absenteeism in the workplace wow i mean it's, wow, it's interesting Karim. it's just so much um information that we've learned from you about um different your different offerings with your two uh, two organizations but i guess bringing it back to yourself again uh what does a i guess what does a standard day look like for you like a day-to-day -day in the life of karim what does a just a, an average day look like for you sure 
I get up at half past four every day. Half four, wow. Half past four, I go for my run. Um, either I go for a run, walk, or cycling. That's the one thing I do. When I come back, I do my meditation, uh, and then I will have my shower. I will make my breakfast. I will I will write my LinkedIn post. Because the reason I do that because I don't know how my day will end. Because running a business, you never know, right? Yeah. And I just thought, right, if I commit myself in the morning, two hours, three hours for myself, that's the best thing, right? And I will leave the rest of. If I get an opportunity in the end of the day. Uh, to do some other activity, um, then I will do it. For example, I love to work in my garden and stuff like this, right? Uh, because that's very, very good for my own health and well-being. Um, but would I get a chance? Because nowadays, you know, um, um, the dark night already starts about six o'clock. I don't get a chance. But that's why I do everything in the morning. And you know what? For me, I'm more productive in the morning. I'm, I'm a yeah. morning person rather than a night person. Do you know what I mean? So, so, so that's what my day is like. You know, you get a tough days. Uh, you get a very, very good days. You just never know because yeah. the times are hard for everyone. It's like for me to grab every single opportunity I've been presented. So how, how important then is routine for you then? Oh, that's routine is very, very important for me. You know what? I don't even set any alarm in my phone. I, I got a natural clock now that I get up at this natural, time, yeah. right? That's not the clock for my uh, for my weekend because my weekend clock is completely different. This is my Monday to <laughs> Friday clock. <laughs> is that is that is that the weekend that Revolution to Cuba? That that's it. Yes, yeah, Rev the Cuba. Is <laughs> <what> <laughs> <it>. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm the same. Um, that yeah, no matter what time I'll go to sleep, I'll, I'm always up at like seven o'clock. My body just wakes me up. I could go yeah. to bed. Yeah, I could be working on a project live and be up till like four a.m. And yeah. then I think, oh, I go to sleep. You know, I've not got a meet until maybe eleven midday. And my body will still wake me up at seven a.m. in the morning. Yeah. So I think it's, it's good yeah. to create the discipline within yourself. I think that's very important. Discipline yeah. and consistency. And you know what? If you have the discipline but not consistency, it means you're going to do one day and next day completely different. That's why mm. discipline and consistency, they, bust, they both must be there actually to, to make sure, like, okay, what you say to yourself, you do it. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So I, I, I have a saying. So if I don't feel like doing something, I will just repeat in my head three times. I will do the thing that I know I'm supposed to do, whether I whether I feel like it or not. Yeah. And so I just repeat that in my head. So, you know, it might be like eight o'clock in the evening and I've not been to the gym. I'll just say that line in my head. I'm like, right, just get my ass to the gym um, and do it. I don't, you know, it might not be the hardest <laughs> workout, but at least I got out to go and do it and feel yeah. much better. Yeah, that, that Blair, better. what about you? That's what the Nile said. What about you, Blair? Uh, yeah, I mean, mostly my, my routine is the same like throughout the the week, really. Just waking up at uh, seven, mostly get myself to the office um, before a certain time around um, between like half eight, nine o'clock. And yeah, just uh, mostly it's just working as long as I need to just get all the main tasks done. Because as I say, you when you're in the organization, you're not really just working on one project you're working on like multiple different projects yes. and it's just finding out because i've been spending more on my weekends uh, recently just like planning out what i'm going to focus on like um throughout the weeks just so that you've almost got that balance because yes because one of the things it's also important to you know like take time out for yourself you know like personal health and fitness and whatnot so yeah. it's just yeah it's just scheduling your time if you need to do a certain amount of hours someday a certain amount of hours uh, another day and then it's just putting in the um marking out the days where you can focus on like health and fitness because you don't want to be bogged down on a let's say a laptop all day you've also got to think about uh long term like um your fitness and your health really so yeah it's just um i just try and set out a routine for myself every week and just focus on what are the main bits that i need to work on and uh what kind of maybe push to the side and work on at a future date so it's just yes. uh that's that's what i spend most of my weekends doing these days now to be honest i think so. one thing i would say and this may sound a little bit mean but there is a point behind it. If I do not look after myself, nobody else will. Yes. Trust me, yeah. nobody else will. You know, I've tested this, I've seen this, you know, and that's why I invest more time within myself rather than on the other on 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 other things. Because 
I am more important. If I can look after myself, I can look after my family, I can look after my clients, I can look after my customers. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. completely agree. And actually, it's one of the things I've started to do in the last three weeks is to take my health more seriously and start working out more. Because um, obviously, as an entrepreneur, the work never stops. And, you know, you get into states of flowing and you think, oh, I'll finish one thing, need to start moving on to the other. But yeah. if you don't take care of your health, then you'll suffer. Um, and suffer you know, work is one thing. One, work is one thing. Even if you work uh, 24-7, 365 it will still you will still get some more to do it will never mm. stop it will never stop mm. Mm. you know because our yeah. brain is just like okay do you know what even if i finish this oh how can i improve this how can i improve it so where you end it you start more and more because we keep constantly thinking it will never end so we need a kind of like a, a line where just said uh, you know what enough is enough is my my time now <laughs> Absolutely. So that is a little piece, that is a little nugget for today for everyone listening to the podcast. Make sure, you know, you give some time for yourself, you know, whether it's, you know, exercise, meditation, whether it's going and doing a hobby that you've been putting off for the longest time. Yeah. Make time to enjoy things. Yeah. Go for um, a walk. Simple walk. You know, I mean, yeah, thinking if you, yeah. if, if you're working from home, just go for a walk, you know, it's nothing wrong. Do some stretches, do something, a physical activity, which is, not your work station related. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So what we're going to do now, Karim, is that we're going to move on to the bonus part of the podcast. Wow, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. I love bonuses, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next, so the first question that we've got is the one where I do judge all my, uh, all my guests on the answer that they do give me. So hopefully you do give me the, the right answer to this one, Karim. Um, yeah. So the first one is, does pineapple belong on a pizza? No. <laughs> Listen, I'm, 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 I'm coming from an Asian background, right? And we love our spices. I will never put a pineapple on a pizza. I never do that. Sorry, guys. If people like pineapple, just eat it like that, but not on a pizza. <laughs> that's what that's what I've been telling everybody. That's what I tell everybody. We've had about maybe five or six guests who said um, that they would put a uh, pineapple on a pizza, and yeah, carnage is almost uh, spilled on the podcast. So to those people, uh, I will just say to those people, I will say check the calories then <laughs> <laughs> and the sugar intake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just have the pineapple after the pizza to help with the digestion. Don't have it on there. Um, yeah, crazy people. Uh, second question, Karim. You know what? Well, I'll be interested to hear. You know, if you could throw a dinner party tonight and you could invite three guests, dead or alive, who would be at your dinner party? So they could be anyone or um... anyone, past or present. I will invite my mom. She's not with us anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. I will, uh, I let two people as one, my grandparents for a hundred percent, you know, because they are the one. Yeah. And um, I probably be invite, I'm just thinking who it could be, who got a very, who got a very, very bad posture. I'm going to try and find, find that person <laughs> who got a very bad posture. Actually, I'm just <laughs> thinking hard. Who can, who can I think actually? Because as I said, I'm a businessman. I need to draw some business, you know? Yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe you know what? Do you remember a wrestler called Warrior? Do you remember back oh, in the time? Warrior. The Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we we were big. We were big uh, wrestling fans growing up. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Ultimate Warrior. Yes. Do you remember Hogan, uh, Big Boss, and stuff like this? I, I used to love it. You know, yes, yeah. <laughs> Hogan, Big Boss Man, The Undertaker. Old school, like 80s, 90s wrestling. That, that was my, actually, no, that's my second favorite time. Uh, I was more of a the rock stone cold era, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, I loved, I loved those days. Those were the days. Um, so yeah, nice little, nice little connection there. Um, and I suppose the, the third question, hmm, the third question would be, you know, if you could have any superpower, Karim, 
what superpower would you have and why? I would have a superpower of knowledge. Mm. Because from why, the knowledge, why knowledge? Why knowledge? Because I can benefit myself and I can benefit other people. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. very important. I would say mm. education and knowledge, but I think the knowledge is like, okay, um, you know, because once you understand the things right, you know, yourself, you can help other people. And you know what? Look, for me as an entrepreneur, my my life will be dedicated to help improve people's quality of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why for me, you know, educating myself, you know, expanding more on that and be more knowledgeable about my subject area. That's why I said knowledge. Knowledge. Wow. Awesome. And I don't think we asked you this question on the podcast, but who was your biggest role model growing up? My parents, I would say, uh, because thing is, uh, as I said, we, we come from the very, very poor family, yeah. right? And uh, my parents never had any education. They didn't even know how to, how to write English, but they managed to create a very big business and it was all about people's skills. Yeah. So for me, my parents will always be my role model because not only that they taught us how to do it, they demonstrated, they will take mm. us the kids actually to the events that they will go to and we yeah. will observe them that how they're communicating with people what they're saying so people buy into it you know so the people skills so they they were all be my role models mm. it's been a, quite an interesting thing that quite a lot of the individuals that we've had on the podcast who were entrepreneurs had a family member who was an entrepreneur previously um so that bug will have spread spread to them uh, so it's, it's quite yeah. a, it's quite an interesting thing because look any um, any education any education starts from home yeah we mm -hmm. observe parents don't we so for example mm -hmm. in one of my podcasts they said what advice you will give to parents in in the in uh when they're working from home and i just said make sure they're working with the right posture because kids are watching them mm -hmm. right if they see the mom is working from a sofa or dad is working from the bed what they are learning from the um what they're learning from uh, from their parents and you know what we now in the generation where they are the gamers where the young generation who are so tech savvy there's the issue called tech neck actually and a lot of young youngsters now suffering from tech neck which is they're on the phones all the time on their tablets on their mobile phones like this all the time they are causing a lot of pain to themselves yeah, yeah. right into gaming Gaming is just supposed to be one hour, but now you got the gamers, they're gaming for like 16 hours a day. 12. Yeah, 12, 16 hours a day. So, you know, for me, it's all about like, okay, look, we need to raise an awareness, just not for the parents, it's for their kids as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we could, on that whole new topic we could go into talking about <laughs> esports and, you know, the, yes. the pros and, and cons, but we haven't got enough time to go into that. <laughs> so, maybe in the future, we'll, we'll, we'll have a chat on that, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, Karim, thank you so much for thank being a guest. Thank you so much. You know what? I TV. really appreciate that. No, thank no, you. it's been a pleasure. And you know what? For the audience listening, if they want to follow you on your journey or get in touch, where's the best place on socials to find LinkedIn you? is the best place. Yeah. So come and to LinkedIn, type in Karim Samani, and there is a picture of the best beard man in the ye yellow color background mm -hmm. with a pink color bow tie. Uh, and you will never miss me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure in this podcast, you're going to put, put the link as well so people can come uh, and just follow me. Yes, yeah. Yep. Oh, God. So, yeah, all you have to look for is multi award winning chairman with a beard. Yes, yeah. Or was it multi award winning beard, beard yeah. with a chair? You know, so, by the way, I didn't talk about my two uh, two awards that are why I'm being called a multi award winning chairman, right? I didn't give you the yeah. story of that. So, I won two business awards. One is the Federation of Businesses Wellbeing Award of the Year, and the second one is the Personal Branding Award by Fresh Perspective. So these are two awards that I've been, I've won in a very short period of time. And what right? year was this? So FSB was 2022, and the year before that, there was a personal branding one. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. And the chairman, I tell you why, why I've been called the chairman. So the chairman, uh, I was given that uh, title uh, by a very good uh, connection of mine called Laura. And I was going to an exhibition and she was walking this way and I was walking here. And she said, 
are you the chairman from LinkedIn? And I was just like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Can I steal it, please? Yes. And she goes, yeah, use that. And that's where I got chairman. And, you know, so yes, yeah. And I and I got Gary Neville to call me chairman as well at the one point. I got a video with him. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Karim. And thank I'm you. sure we'll be we'll have you back on the TVBB podcast in a in a future yes. episode. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. And I, as I said, I truly appreciate that. You know, I really enjoyed having the conversation with you both. And I'm sure we're gonna meet up for a coffee very soon. You know. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Thanks again, Karim. All right. Thank you Take so much, care. guys. Thank you. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Bye. But no. So, Karim. What did you make of today's guest? Uh, Karim, he had a um, really interesting backstory being, well, similar to a lot of our uh, guests, you know, it's from an entrepreneurial like family, and it's almost like the bug of watching him, watching these struggles that his um, mother and father like went through um, at a young age, being that they were from like a, a rich background. And it's just building something from nothing and then essentially just making a successful business, even even from though you again it didn't have the, the the best start in terms of like financially, it's making something out of a career path, something that he's uh, passionate with. And also, what I found interesting with um, Karim's story uh, in general as well, it's about one of the one of the main things that I took from it is that whole being a risk taker. And it's, it's like when he's first getting started with even like, you know, getting his website set up, one of the things that stuck out for me um, from his journey particularly is that instead he just needed to learn in those six months periods when he didn't like say have a lot of money and he needed to just save up. He just went in there, worked on his website, like, like e-commerce and whatnot. Um, and just, just trying to teach yourself new skills that you learn along the way. So it's um it's a int very interesting story, a very enjoyable episode, and I really love the uh, hearing his uh, backstory about by yourself now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're hitting it on the head, obviously. You know, the fact that there was I think there was three key things he did say was that, that you know, always be continuously learning. Yeah. And you have to as an entrepreneur, you know, you you've gotta be adaptable and agile because it's your business, so you have to make sure you learn everything. You know, Karim had mentioned that he spent six months yeah. learning how to build websites. Yeah. That he was so he could work on building his own website. Well, it took six months for him to build his website, yeah. but he would have had to have gone through courses, go on YouTube, you know, you know, read read information in order to get to the point where he could do that. And you know, he's 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 he, and he's not and he's continuously learning every single day. Yeah. You know, the whole thing of being a risk taker. You know, not being afraid to come out of your comfort zone yep. and do things that you know most people wouldn't do. You know, even leaving uh, his job in the corporate world, being an accountant. You know, most people wouldn't take that risk to leave a, a, a comfortable job to go and explore something different, like running your own business, where there's the risk that it could all fail and you'll you lose. You potentially may lose the lifestyle that you had in that corporate in the corporate environment but you can also reap great benefits if you continue if you learn and you make it a success so i thought that was quite interesting in terms of uh, in that aspect yeah. and you know one thing i was really interested uh, in, in hearing was that whole thing around the personal branding yeah yeah um and how karim has built a following uh as he said through the pandemic yeah. through using social media platforms like linkedin to grow his audience because he realized that, you know, great, it's great having a product and a service, but people are gonna, people buy from people. Yeah. And he realized very clearly that, you know, he's gonna have to do, put himself out there on LinkedIn, let the audience get to know him, let them connect with him, follow him on his socials, and then they'll be like, right, we know Karim, I want to, I want to work with Karim. And then he was able to sell his products and service as a as a result. And you know, it's seats like you know entrepreneurs, whether it's like uh, Elon Musk or Steve Jobs. You know, they are the face of the brand, and people buy into their vision and then want to be affiliate, want to end up buying products or buying a service from them. Um, so I thought that was really really good. And I also liked because um, he touched on this um, briefly about of how 
having a essentially like a a routine like a structure mm -hmm. so how we every morning be waking up let's say like half four in the morning and uh doesn't matter what he feels like in the morning he's just got to um to go for a run in the morning you hear that from a lot of let's say like professional athletes doesn't matter like what you what you're feeling and whatnot you just gotta keep into the routine go for a run even when you don't feel like it and it's also and i also find this interesting um in the morning up also after the run go having like meditation so mm -hmm. um meditation obviously soothing for your soul because you know what he was saying as a uh, you sometimes have good days and then sometimes you'll have like rough days as an entrepreneur and you don't know what's coming around the corner so it's just all part of that keeping yourself calm routine in terms of uh, helping you not only the structure of your day but just um because it can be a very like stressful period when in terms of like running like your business and whatnot and it's just best to have like that routine to keep yourself in check because it's he was mentioning about like discipline as well because like there'll be you could also have like one day where essentially you could work several hours but then you maybe on one day you could maybe not work the same amount of hours so it's again just highlighting the importance of just having like a almost like a structured mindset but then a structured like schedule about mm -hmm. like how you essentially manage your time how you manage your week and then just the importance of health a healthy mindset not just for your body but also for your mind itself no I agree yeah yeah, he did say he did mention that. And then the whole thing around, you know, as an entrepreneur, making sure you do your research. Yeah. It's always important. Um, do your research so you can go in well armed, whether it's you're going into a business meeting or whether it's coming up with an idea and a vision, doing your doing your market research and see, you know, is this product or service, is it what customers are asking for? Um is highly important and then i think he also mentioned it around you know the whole uh, sink or swim yeah and definitely if you're going to swim learn how to adapt and learn so yeah. you know for example covid crisis a lot of businesses went under um, unfortunately during covid but some businesses who survived and thrived had to adapt to the changing circumstances and that's one of the things that Karim did is that he noticed, was it 90% of his business? 93%, yeah. 93% of his business tanked um, when COVID hit. So that's when he ended up setting, and that was in the uh, tech te disinfect. That's in the tech disinfect. So that's when he created um, well being and ergonomics. So workstations for uh, em employees. And then that's when his, his he was able to create another business that married with um, the first business. So sometimes that's what you have, you have to do when you're in a challenging circumstances. I think highly entertaining uh, as a guest. Um, and definitely, you know, it's even got me thinking of, during our chat today, the importance of health and safety in, in, the, in the workplace. You know, never even thought about disinfecting workstations and machines or even doing it from uh, staff that work from home. So yeah. it's definitely... It definitely piqued my interest, um, and uh, yeah, I think we I think think about doing some more or do it. You know, starting personal branding and on social media. Um, maybe I might have to get up early. I might have to get up at four a.m. just to do that uh, because it is important. Just like yeah, people will buy from people. So yeah. a lot of great tips uh, in this episode of the podcast. Yeah, absolutely, and. Uh... We, you did mention you see Karim uh, a lot in uh, Revolution to Cuba, so we will have to uh, eventually arrange a, uh, a drink with Karim we might have in to. the uh, city of Manchester. He did say a coffee first, <laughs> coffee, yeah. well, not a coffee, um, <laughs> a baby Guinness, a baby Guinness. <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for today, guys. We hope you have enjoyed this episode. Um, as mentioned, Karim posted his social uh, socials in the episode, so please make sure to go follow him. If you want to follow the Blair Project on our social media, we are on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube at The Blair Project. And we're on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Get Me Motoring. So make sure to like, comment, and like, comment, subscribe, and share this episode of the podcast and catch us on another exciting episode of the See Me Be Me podcast. But for now, take care. Peace see you. Guys. 
If you've liked today's episode, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. The Blair Project is all is on all major social media platforms, including Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube at The Blair Project. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, and, and TikTok. Yes, we are on TikTok at Get Me Motoring. If you'd like to follow myself individually, I am on Instagram at Niall Henry and also LinkedIn uh, at Niall Henry as well. And if you want to follow myself, I'm on Instagram as Blair Henry underscore 97 and also on um, LinkedIn as just Blair Henry. So we look forward to having you on the next episode. So stay tuned. Take care. Until next time.